So you open Google Chrome on your phone. You're rushing to buy tickets to a concert that all your friends are going to. Picture yourself now. Crowd surfing to the front, being invited onto the stage, backstage the world tour, and before you know it, you're dancing in Tokyo. Wait, what? Three tickets left? It's a good thing your saved payment details autofill quickly and securely. There's no place like Chrome. Download Google Chrome on your phone. Hey, what's going on? It's the Man Fuse Podcast. I am Kay Lee, your host, my co-host, Ben H. Today, we'll continue our conversation with Matthew LaCroix, and he's going to weigh in on some ancient civilizations that were not only advanced, but were wiped out seemingly quickly. Was it an impact from a meteor, or was it something else? Matt has a theory. To lead in so we can understand how this whole thing connects, I want to give you an example. we got to connect this around the world. When I talk about this to people, like the level of sophistication we're talking about, go from a place like Easter Island, okay, all the way to Baalbek, Lebanon, Great Pyramids of Giza area with down through Aswan, Egypt, and the unfinished obelisk, all the way to China with the Yangshan Quarry. I want to just mention the point of bringing up all of those sites. Number one, those places are in different parts of the world, right? Yeah. All different parts of the world. Number two, those sites show us that those places had the oldest civilizations in the world that we know of sophisticated civilizations, not primitive, not hunter-gatherers. We know that those locations had these incredibly sophisticated megaliths, okay? But what we also know is that of those locations I just mentioned, each one of them displays characteristics that's uncanny and almost worrisome. They all have, at the largest projects they'd ever taken on, I'll mention them again just in case people don't know, Easter Island, Baalbek, Lebanon, Aswan, Egypt, and Yangshan Quarry in China. They all had those super civilizations, we'll call them, master civilizations long ago, were in the process of taking on the largest projects they'd ever taken on in their history. Stuff that's like colossal. In terms of Baalbek, Lebanon, blocks that are 1,200 tons. That's insane. In in Xiangshan Quarry in China, how about 16,000 tons? Blocks Blocks so big, blocks of stone so big that we could not move them today with our modern machinery. That's nuts. Now, in each one of these locations that I just mentioned, those civilizations were in the process of creating the largest structure that it ever made and all of a sudden poof they disappeared wow each one of the largest blocks was left in its quarry unfinished wow. sticking out or like in example in easter island the moai statue they were about to erect was about almost three times bigger than any of the moai statues on the island wow so all of a sudden they disappear in the state where they're all unfinished it tells us that these structures these civilizations were wiped out extremely quickly probably without much of a warning since they were in the middle of working on them and it was so so significant that even though they were harmonically tuned to the balance of the earth and the universe not materialistic building things in incredible precision and understanding cycles they were all wiped out and crazy. we're talking about events that reset humanity essentially and whatever knowledge was passed down was carried down less and less to the point where we had to almost start over again Okay, that's why so many incredibly sophisticated things were built long ago, and then we were never able to do it again, for instance, like the Great Pyramid of Giza. Two and a half million stone blocks, an average of eight to ten tons each. It's physically impossible would have taken them laying over 100 blocks a day for like 50 years. It's, It's impossible. Right. Impossible. We know that it's part of technology that we simply cannot replicate. Yeah, we we don't understand it. Now that I've laid that down, the point of that is researchers in my field have been in two camps studying what could have caused that. Right. And the two camps are like you're familiar with Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson. That's the camps of a cosmic impact. Yes. And while I support the idea of that, I'm in the camp of a coronal mass ejections has made a lot more sense to me based on the evidence around the world. Can you repeat that? that last thing again. Yeah, so based on the evidence around the world, I believe that these catastrophes and these civilizations were actually destroyed, not by a cosmic impact necessarily, primarily I'll say, but from these massive solar events, these coronal mass ejections. Gotcha. And the reason I say that is we find these really bizarre things around the world where these ancient sites that we know are a certain age have these like strips of black across them in yeah. some places where they were burned. And the it's called vitrification. Well. Yeah. Yeah, and to take 
take that, it means that some temperatures on the Earth would have had to exceed 2,000 degrees. Wow. I mean, we can't even comprehend that. The hottest temperature on record on Earth is like 130 2, something. 2,000 degrees. That is like scorched Earth. That's, That's why. What it is. Scorched Earth. That's why we're seeing in places like Turkey, you see the largest underground cities in the world. They were created to house over 20,000 people because these right? ancient people would go into great lengths because they knew that unless they went underground during these events, they would be destroyed. And in that case of that civilization, the civilizations around the Anatolia region of Turkey, they were like, we have celestial libraries like Gobekli Tepe, where they were mapping these giant T-shaped pillars. They were mapping the heavens. They deliberately buried that site knowing a catastrophe was coming. And it took more time to bury it than it did to create it. And they never came back to unbury it. Means that, imagine like the the ancient people went into these caves to survive these events and then they never made it out. That's that's just so intense. Or they the reason couldn't I'm come out in, in their lifetime, right? I mean, well, you, well, yeah, because I got to tell you, when you're studying ice cores from Greenland in Antarctica, some of these periods of catastrophes and upheavals between ice ages and non-ice ages, meaning interglacial periods, these periods of time between not constant disasters, but imagine right. a disaster in the front end and then maybe in the middle and then one at the end. Yeah. But how about ups and downs that are extreme for like 1500 years? Yeah, exactly. It's like a hundred year, a human life cycle is like nothing right? compared to the cycle of these events, right? I mean, it's not like it was over in a couple of weeks. No. That's you the know? point is that we, we have to it's <laughs> like imagine even these people being this sophisticated and this good at surviving back in the day, like not now where we just go to a grocery store and just buy our food. But imagine like those hard people still not making it okay so then with that being said it almost appears as if now these are natural events or is there an architect that's the part that gets complicated because because you want to go like high level go into ancient sumerian and babylonian tablets which is one of the expert the things i focus on as an expert is reading ancient sumerian and looking into the history of the oldest civilizations on earth that left behind the most extensive records and they did it in the most ingenious way possible by doing wedges into clay and then baking them mm -hmm. which was the only way you can have any message preserved for more than 500 years. Interesting. Wow. Pa paper at the most extensive in a dry ancient Tibetan library, which we found in 1901 in Tibet, the oldest records we can get for paper resources is 500 to 1,000 years. Wow. In the best <laughs> conditions possible. Best possible conditions, meaning that the only way you can have a message appear is survive anywhere on Earth, besides orally, which of course gets corrupted over time, <laughs> is through the, the brilliance of these ancient Sumerians and Akkadians and Babylonians was etching into clay and then firing it, and then it could survive five five ten thousand years wow, wow so they intense. anyway they so they left behind thousands and thousands of tablets about just literally telling us like look this didn't happen by accident civilization was handed down here and created that's what they talk about in every tablet and they talk about how there was these powerful angelic like beings that are basically like us but more powerful that created us they created everything here like they created civilization is all knowledge of mathematics astronomy animal husbandry agriculture they state that it was handed down from them. And it's very extensively talked about and shown. Like, for instance, there's a, a cylinder seal called the Mula Pin that shows about this connection with the star constellations and how they were designing cities to be based on those constellations like Eridu. And the first cities ever created were created in Mesopotamia to mimic the constellation of Eridanus. That's why the first city ever created was called Eridu. Okay. Based on the constellation of Eridanus. Got it. Okay. Then they then go on to state state that they then handed down all knowledge of how to create civilization to these cities that emerged and that that's where they came from. But then they go on to talk about how humanity and this experiment here became out of control and they created catastrophes to wipe us out here. The higher beings from the Eridanus. They're not from there specifically. They don't tell us where they're from. Essentially, we are them. They made and, us and, in their image. Okay, so biblically, because I know you guys from the Bible Belt down there, That's imagine right. imagine they are exactly the same thing as archangels. That's what they are. Right. They are them. And right. that God is real and source is real, but there are other things mixed in that are related and connected to it that are complex. Right. Huh. The ancients described God as being this perfect creation of everything. Everything yeah. is created in perfection. 
But in order for it to be a perfect creation, you can't influence in a way where you impose yourself. Wow. So imagine if you were to have to stand back and everything unfolds, but there are extensions of you that exist. Right. That's what they essentially describe the creators of us as being like extensions of God, That which is why we're so angelic and connected, so closely connected to God in so many religious texts throughout history. Gotcha. So fascinating, man. At one point, they were decided to wipe us out and it, we survived. Some of these catastrophes are part of a, a cycle, which is like almost like a game where it's like, how far can we get in 13,000 years before we have to start over again? Wow. Yeah. I mean, essentially, right? Because there's another wipeout coming at yeah, some point. But, well, that's the greatest thing about this amazing movie of humanity, this great story, this epic of humanity that we're going through. These trials and tribulations of us almost being wiped out, you know, potential for the gifts that we have being held back so much for so long. And then this surprising twist where we're supposed to be wiped out and we actually make it. Or how about the twist of how we are the most corrupted, um, living the most illusion world reality we ever had in all of our history and we had ancient people that understood their harmonious balance with the universe and consciousness and they were destroyed and we may be the ones that survived what a twist that is yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's a plot twist plot yeah. twist <laughs> yeah, and the that... idea is that it's like well we also have certain technologies they didn't have yes hey once again thanks for listening to the Manfuse podcast join the show by going to manfuse.com or call 770-744-5 227. You could send a text or leave a message. Thanks.